since we're using absorption pane, we have to use you know um, you know that one of the methods in absorption pane to display the output as well. So I'm going to use the absorption panes dot show message dialog. Absorption pane dot show message dialog takes in a couple of arguments. First, I'm going to pass in null. And we'll talk more about it in future chapters. But now it's go basically going to center the dialog box in the screen on the screen. And then the next thing is what you want to display on the on the dialog box. Okay. So before I, I display something on the dialog box, I want to uh, format it first, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use a string dot format method to format what I want to display with my geometry pane show message dialog box, uh, show message dialog method. So the string the format me uh, method takes in a couple of arguments as well. First of all, it takes in your format string, which will include format specifiers, and then some arguments here, which will replace your format specifiers. So, so, let, so you, you know what I mean by that. So let, let's just, just you know, type in what we want to display. I'm going to type in the averages And then I'm going to type in a format specifier or a specifier over here. So the average is we know the average is going to be a floating point value, right? So I'm going to type in a percentage f. Now this is a placeholder. Don't worry, I'll talk about it in a second. So I'm going to say the average is something is going to replace this. We'll, I'll talk about it in a second. So the average is the, um, so it's going to be a value here. And I'm going to type in letter grade. And I'm also going to type in another format specifier, percentage C. A character value is going to replace this, and a floating point value is going to replace this. So this is your format string, and this is these are your format specifiers. Now the second argument again, in the string of format method is basically the values that are going to replace these format specifiers respectively. The first argument you pass in here will replace the first format specifier you have in your format string. The second argument that follows will replace the second format specifier in your format string. So the first one I'm going to type is going to replace this. It needs, to, I'm basically converting whatever um, argument I'm going to pass here to, a, to a, as a floating point of value. So that's going to be our average and we know our average is stored in user average. So I'm going to pass that in here. So user average is going to replace this value here, formatted as a floating point value. All format specifiers start with a percentage sign. And then the next one that I, that I want to replace this percentage C, I want it to be formatted as a character, basically displayed as a character. And that's going to be our letter grade. And we know the letter grade will be stored here in letter grade. So I'm going to pass that here as well. All right, there's some extra formatting we need to do. I'll talk about that in a second. But this string, the format method, is going to return okay, our formatted string. Once it returns it, I need a place to store it. So I'm going to come up here, declare a string, and I'm going to call it output string. So let's just do, yeah, let's just do, let's do user output string. Or let's just do output string. That's it, <laughs> output string. Initially, I'm going to set it to an empty string. Okay, this is empty. It's nothing. And this string, the format is going to basically return our format string. I'm going to store that in our output string this way. But now that I have our output string, I can pass that as a second argument of the show message that the option panes show message dialog. Okay, this is going to center the dialog box on the screen, and this is going to display our message formatted on the dialog box. Now, finally, anytime you use a option pane class. One, you know, once your program is done executing, it doesn't end, right? Because the jumping pin class causes an extra task to run in the background, and and basically, you know, um, that that extra task is, is actually called a thread, and you need to terminate it, you know, in order to have your program, you know, terminate properly. So I'm going to type in system. Dot exit which is going to basically terminate that extra th uh, th thread or oh, sorry yeah that, that that extra task called a thread i'm also going to pass in an exit code which is zero this is an exit code this is a number that i'm passing and it's going to be received by the operating system and normally it's an indication um 
you know, normally zero is an indication. What once the operating system is able to receive this is an indication that the program runs successfully. All right. Normally this value is ignored, but you know, it can be used to determine whether the program runs successfully or not. So it's an exit code zero. Zero is normally an indication that a program runs successfully, and it it will also terminate that task that is um, started uh, by using the Jobchain pane class. Okay. Let's go to thread. So, so far, I think we're looking good. Um, so let me go ahead and compile this. I know I talked a lot about this, but it's, again, just to make sure it's clear, right? So if you already understand it, feel free to, like, uh, skip through um, or just, you know, fast forward it a little bit. But if, if it's helping, then that's, that's great as always. So let's compile this and see if we have any errors. Um, so this is actually a Chapter 3 program. So I'm going to open the Chapter 3, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it so test score and grade, I'll call this test score and grade, let's see, test score and grade, I'll call this J option pane. So by doing this, uh, so, it's a, so this is the folder, right? What I should have done, so I'll create, so I'll create the folder first. Um, what I should have done actually was to name, name this program the same way. Now, if you if you save your file as test scores and grade, you need to make sure that um, you actually name your class also as test score and grade. But I want to in this case, I want to save it as test scores and grade G option pane dot Java. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to get an error because, like I said, you need to when you save your file as test scores and grade G option pane dot Java over here, then you need to make sure your class is also called the same. So I'm going to get an error. But I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make sure that test scores and grade over here is changed to match how I save the file. Save it into as test scores and grade G option pane. So I'll save that. I get an error. It says that, you know, where is it? Um, it says it should be declared in a file named test scores and grade. But I named the file as test scores and grade G option pane. So the op so I so it's either I change the file to match this name, or I change this name to match the file name. So I'll change this to match the file name. So te test goes in grade J option pane. It has to be exactly how you name the file. So when I compile this, it works. Now it moves us to the next error. So what is it saying this time? Let's see. Cannot find symbol variable user third score. All right, so I have user third score here. OK, so over here, it's a, it's a lowercase s for the score, and over here, it's an uppercase s. So it's saying, I don't know what, you know, you don't have any variable declared called uh, with an uppercase s here. I have a variable with a lowercase s. So I'm going to change this so it matches what I'm using here. All right, so I'm going to compile this, and, and it works. All right, so I'm going to run our program and see what happens. It says, please enter the first score. I'm going to enter 100 for the first another 100 for the second, and 100 for the third score. So I'm expecting to get an A, right? So when I hit OK, it says the average is 100, let's a great A. So that's working. We need to format this value. I want to format it to maybe one decimal place or maybe even zero decimal places. So let's go back to our, our format string over here. Over here, I said I was going to, this, this value here, user averages, was going to replace our format specifier, which is percentage F. We can we can go ahead to you know further format it. So I want to specify the precision because we we, we saw that hundred was hundred point zero 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 zero. I want it to be formatted to two decimal places. So in between the percentage and the F, I'm going to be specifying I'm going to specify the precision. So I'm going to type in point two. That's because I want to format it to two decimal places. If you wanted to format it to three decimal places, I'll do point three. But because I want to format it to two decimal places, I'll do point two. And basically that. You know that you know it does it for us. Um, let's do point one actually. Okay, let's format it to one, uh, one decimal place. So compile this, run. Let's try again. I'm going to type in a hundred, 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 and answer is the average is hundred point zero. Let's a grade A. You can also do just you know um, zero decimal places, but of course you want to see that at the you know want to see the the decimal places. Let's try all the values and see if this works. And we can see that that extra task, you know, it happens very quickly. That, that extra t task, when you run your program, you see it's, you know, terminated quickly be uh, qu quickly because of the system that exit. And when I run this, let's run this and I'll show you very quickly here. 
it exit very fast. It, basically, this will exit very fast. This is like an indication of our of our program running or our task running. So please enter the first column. I'm going to enter, let's say, 90, and then 80, and then 78. Hit OK, and it says the average is 82.7 letter grade B. So 82.7, anything between 80 and 89 is a B. So that's accurate. When I hit OK, I'm going to try to hit OK by hitting Enter. And look at this, it's going to exit very quickly. Gone. And that's because of our system that exit. If we didn't have that, it would stay there. And that's kind of an indication of our task still running because of the geoption pane we used. Let's try a few more values to see if this is working correctly. Let's try 0 for the first core, 56, and then let's say you did well a little bit, 89 on the last core. I'm going to hit OK. You got an F. Any, F is anything below 60, so that's that's correct. One more. Let's try 67. You got a 90 on the other one, and you got an 88. So anything <coughs> between 80 and 89 is a B. I'm trying to get a value, let's say, between C. Uh, you know, something, something with a C or a D. Let's try 67, 68, 70. All right, so 60 to 69 is a letter grade D. One more to just to get to see. I'm, you know, I just like testing these programs anyway. So 80, 70, and let's say 92. I get a B anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's try one more time. 80, and then 70, 70. I get a C. All right. So anything between 70 and 79, let's just C. So it's working. All right. So I know I talked quite a bit in this program, you know, talking about the grading and all that. Again, it's just to make sure it's clear. Um, we are using only the tools we have or we've learned in Chapter 3 to do this, and that's why we didn't include any loops or anything like that. And so, you know, we are not testing to make sure the user is typing, you know, like the user is not typing negative numbers or numbers over 100. So make sure when you're testing it, you're using numbers from 0 to 100. And in future future chapters, yeah, as we've done, I think we've done, um, you see that once we get to chapter four, we use you need more concepts like loops to kind of you know validate input. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please comment down below, and I'll do everything to respond to them. Uh, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then, bye bye.